We unfortunately hear of missing children's cases pretty regularly now these days. Many times the root of the missing child turns out to be the parent or the caretaker, and many times they wait days, weeks, or even months to report their own child as missing. But in some cases, like the one I'll be sharing with you today, the parents or caretakers don't even know that their child is missing and has been missing for days, which is extremely alarming. Athena Brownfield is a four-year-old little girl from Oklahoma who is missing and has been missing since at least Friday, January 6th, 2023. Now, in a detail that I have never heard before in any of the cases that I've covered, it wasn't even an adult who reported her as missing. It was Athena's five-year-old older sister. And when the adults were contacted and asked about Athena, at first they told investigators that Athena was three years old. They didn't even know her accurate age, a huge red flag. So many details have come to light in this case, particularly that those closest to her may be responsible for whatever happened to her. This case is unfolding minute by minute, and we are going to review everything we know so far because the question on everybody's mind is what really happened to Athena. Hey guys, I'm Annie Elise. This is 10 to Life. Let's dive right in. Athena Brownfield is four years old. She's the daughter of Jasmine and Wesley Brownfield. She has blonde hair, blue eyes, weighs approximately 45 pounds, and stands at just three feet tall. She is from the city Surreal, which is a small town in Oklahoma with a population of just under 900. Athena and her sister Adina have been in the care of relatives for quite some time. Now, I'm not exactly sure why they are in the care of relatives, but it has been said that there is no court order forcing them to be in the relatives' care, and the relatives have had them for years. Those relatives are Alicia Galvin and Ivan Adams. Alicia is first cousins with Athena's biological mother, Jasmine. Ivan and Alicia also have four biological children of their own that also live with them. The six children, Alicia and Ivan, have all been living in Surreal in a small home on a corner lot. However, Alicia and Ivan recently split up, and things apparently have become pretty toxic. On Tuesday, January 10th, 2023, at around 2 p.m., a postal worker located a five-year-old little girl. She was crying and claiming that she was hungry, that she was alone, and that she didn't know where her sister was. Upon asking more questions, the postal worker learned that this five-year-old little girl was Adina, and she was looking for her little sister, four-year-old Athena. It has been said that the postal worker went to the house with her, but didn't find any adults in the home, nor any other children. So this prompted her to call the police immediately, which first of all, thank goodness, this postal worker listened to her intuition. When police got there, they immediately took custody of Adina when it became clear that there were no adults around. The focus quickly then shifted to where this sister was that Adina kept talking about. Adina told authorities that she had not seen her sister in two days. Authorities were able to get in contact with the caretakers pretty quickly, and Alicia said that she left all six of her children with Ivan. It's being reported that she had apparently left home a week prior to a location about two hours away with her new boyfriend, Bladen, therefore leaving all of the children with her former partner, Ivan. When law enforcement contacted Ivan, he said that he had left Adina and Athena with the grandparents and that he had gone to Arizona with his other four children. Law enforcement realized pretty quickly, though, that the children were not actually left in the care of their grandparents, and it seems like the biological grandparents haven't even seen the girls for quite some time. If Ivan wanted to take his kids to Arizona, that's great and all, but why lie about where you left the other two kids? And why not take all of your kids? Were Athena and Adina being left out selfishly because they weren't his biological children? I could understand maybe not having enough room in the car or being hesitant to take kids that you might not have court orders for, but in that case, make sure that they're left with trusted people. 
Athena did not meet the criteria for an Amber Alert, so law enforcement quickly put out a missing and endangered child notification, which essentially shoots a notification blast out to anyone within a 15-mile radius of Surreal, Oklahoma. Which, as a side note, while I'm glad that everyone in the area heard about Athena, we need to figure out about this Amber Alert system. It's a great system, but the requirements sometimes are much too strict and you lose valuable time. The circumstances of this case should have been grounds for an immediate Amber Alert, but that is an argument for a later date. Initially, it was reported that Athena was three years old. However, that was later amended when law enforcement said that they had learned that Athena is actually four, and they confirmed that they believe she was last seen wearing a butterfly sweater. Now, I have a big problem with the age discrepancy. It is obviously not law enforcement's fault for not knowing how old she is. It is entirely the fault of her caregivers and loved ones for not knowing how old she is off the top of their head. I understand maybe having a lot of kids and it being a lot to keep track of all of the numbers, but I mean, come on, guys, especially when a child is literally missing. There is absolutely no way her age should be a back and forth thing. How do you not know how old the little girl you care for is? Unless this was initially said to mislead investigators for some reason. Regardless of all of the discrepancies and the situation, the community immediately jumped in to help with around 250 people showing up to help search for Athena. By 9 p.m. on Tuesday, January 10th, when there were no leads, the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigations got involved in the search for Athena, and eventually the FBI did as well. A command post was set up inside and outside of Family Life Church. Law enforcement spent all night searching, piecing together a timeline, and trying to figure out where Athena was. At one point overnight, people were even asked to not go outside so that hopefully the infrared tools in the helicopter would be able to spot Athena. There was also some growing speculation in Facebook groups and with people in the community on whether or not Athena may be on the spectrum of autism. On Wednesday morning, the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigations held a press conference where they discussed what they knew so far, or at least what they thought that they could share with the public. So I want to listen to that part of the press conference and then discuss with you. At this time, do you believe that she is in danger? Um, there's, there's not anything to indicate that other than she's a little child and she's missing and um, she's, she's on her own in the elements and um, so, you know, is that in danger? Yeah. But is she the victim of physical harm? That's yet to be determined. And many people have been saying that she's autistic and nonverbal. Can you confirm that? I cannot confirm that she's autistic, but what I can say she has limited verbal skills. It's hard for me to understand how no one was sure whether or not she has autism almost 24 hours into this search. That is something that should have been confirmed within a couple of hours at most. If they really were in contact with the family members, I feel as if they should have had an answer fairly quickly. Alicia and Ivan have allegedly been raising them for years, so I can't imagine that they wouldn't know whether or not she was given a diagnosis or not, or even if she displayed some autistic tendencies. Then again, they apparently didn't even know her correct age, so perhaps knowing any diagnoses is a tall order. I don't know. There was another part of the press conference that I want to talk about after we listen. We saw heavy law enforcement presence at the house. That was a search warrant happening. Anything about that? Uh, yeah, so that's just standard procedure. The child is missing, and so we execute, we're executing a search warrant at the scene right now, at the home, to try to find any clues as to her whereabouts. It's just pretty common. And the crime scene tape doesn't indicate a crime occurred there. It's merely a way for us to keep everybody out that needs to be out so that we can execute our search warrant. I'm curious to know whether or not the search warrant was because they were actually being precautionary or if the search warrant was more because Ivan and Alicia were possibly not letting police into their house. I'm surprised it took them almost 24 hours to get into the house. In my opinion, that makes it sound more like Ivan and Alicia were fighting it rather than them getting it as just a precautionary. Those first few hours when somebody goes missing are vital when it comes to the possibilities of them actually being found alive and safe. So why not cooperate with law enforcement in every way possible rather than stonewalling them? People close to the couple have said that their house is filthy, so perhaps they didn't want law enforcement to see the conditions that the kids had been living in. Or maybe there is something more sinister going on here. 
As of Wednesday, January 11th, the representative for the OSBI went into what measures they were taking to help locate Athena. This included dogs, search and rescue teams, and even a search helicopter. That same Wednesday morning, volunteers were encouraged to come if they felt the urge to help in the search for Athena. Law enforcement was clear that they did not want citizens deploying on their own for the search, but rather they wanted them to come to the church and get directions on what to do. And boy, did this community rally and show up. On Wednesday afternoon, there was another press conference. In the press conference, they said that the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children was now involved as well, as well as the Comanche Nation. The Comanche Nation is a Native American tribe. So not only were all of those people involved, but there's also a military base called Fort Sill who also sent some of their soldiers to help with the search for Athena. People were coming out in droves to help search for this little girl. On Wednesday, so many people showed up, in fact, that they were able to do grid searching. If you're unfamiliar with grid searching, essentially a bunch of people stand in a side-by-side -side line and they search areas together. If you remember the Summer Wells case that I previously covered, they also did a grid search in the beginning when Little Summer was first missing. Grid searching can be difficult to accomplish because of the amount of people needed. But clearly, this little girl being found is such a top priority for the community that they've made it happen. More searches on Wednesday afternoon included boat searches and four-wheel searches. Residents were also asked to search their properties and also search any vacant properties near them. They were also asked to bring in any devices that they have, such as home security cameras, ring doorbells, anything like that, so that law enforcement could comb through them to see if there is anything of use. Also, during that afternoon press conference, Brooke, who is the representative from the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigations, said that they had been collecting items that could be relevant. She said that they wouldn't be calling them evidence, but that they had been finding things around town that may be relevant to the investigation. She also confirmed that Adina is in protective DHS custody, and although she was frightened, she did not need medical care. The weird part of that press conference was when someone asked where the parents of Athena are. Where are the parents right now? Uh, that's part of the ongoing um, investigation. I'm the maternal grandmother. Okay. My son's informed what he needs to deal with. Okay. Now, first of all, if her son is Athena's biological dad, she is not the maternal grandmother. She would be the paternal grandmother. But that part's not a huge deal. Second, it just seems weird that she interjected to let everybody know her son is, quote, doing what he needs to do. In all honesty, it seems like he's doing what he needs to do only after his daughter is missing. We don't know why the girls were living with other family, but in my opinion, had her biological parents done what they needed to do, like it's being said, long ago, they'd be parenting their children and not searching for one with the other one in DHS custody. I feel for the grandmother, but at the same time, I don't think that the biological father should be defended at this moment. Brooke, the OSBI representative, seemed really put off by the grandmother stepping in to let everybody know who her son is. The next question in the press conference was about the timeline and when the last sighting of Athena was. It was said that they're still building the timeline and talking to multiple people, but was reiterated that this all started when Adina was located by that postal carrier. So what would have happened had Adina not been found by the postal carrier? Would anyone even know that Athena is missing? Essentially, it seems that they have no idea when Athena was last seen for sure. Her sister said two days prior, but five-year-olds don't always understand the concept of time. Two days for a five-year-old could mean anything from a few minutes ago to multiple days ago. What seems to be a niece of one of the grandmothers has been discussing the case in a Facebook group. According to her, Adina was interviewed but basically shut down and didn't say anything beyond saying that she hadn't seen her sister in two days. If she did shut down, like it's being said, that just proves how traumatic this is for her. Not to mention a five-year-old shouldn't be the one carrying the responsibility of providing answers for her missing four-year-old sister. That should be the responsibility of the parents and the caretakers. Now, the weird thing about the timeline and the family not seeming to know is that flyers handed out by the Surreal Police said that January 6th was the date she was last seen, which would mean Friday. So it seems that is the date that Ivan left for Arizona with the four children and left the other two behind. 
So from that date alone, we know that Adina had been left alone for at least three to four days, which is a long time for a five-year-old to be home alone. A five-year-old should not even be left home alone for even just a few minutes. Usually, they can't even tie their own shoes. There's no way to take care of themselves for days, especially with a younger four-year-old sister to take care of. So the rest of Wednesday afternoon was spent searching for Athena and searching for any clues as to where she may have gone. I noticed that law enforcement and volunteers seem to be targeting lower areas, areas in which a four-year-old would go and could fit inside of. I even saw a video of a man crawling out of what appears to be a storm drain. The final grid search of the day was at 4 p.m., and it unfortunately came with no results in terms of finding Athena. After the grid search was over, authorities released the volunteers. However, they were still working with the search dogs from the Department of Corrections. They were also using drones from the Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs, and it seems like law enforcement was quite literally using every resource available to them, just hoping that they would be able to locate Athena. Later Wednesday evening, news stations began announcing that search volunteers learned that the investigation was moving now into phase three, which is a criminal investigation. The criminal investigation part seems like there could be a couple of possibilities. Either law enforcement believes that Athena did not wander off and something more sinister happened to her, or the criminal part would be looking into why she was alone and who is at fault for the kids being alone. Penny Brownfield, the paternal grandmother, did an interview with a local news station. In her interview, she thanked people for their support. She also said, I don't know what I can do to help. I'm thankful that all of these people are here to help find her. Other than that, I don't know what else to say. Penny told the reporter that she hasn't seen her granddaughters in a very long time because of family conflict, but also said that she wouldn't be leaving until Athena was found. She also confirmed that Adina is safe. They know where she is, but that she is in the care of DHS. She expanded on that, saying that DHS won't let them see Adina. Now, while I'm sure it is hard for Penny to not be able to see Adina at such a difficult moment, I understand why Adina is being kept in protective custody with DHS. I did some digging on the family, and the family has a very, very complicated history. From what I've gathered, Athena's mother, Jasmine, was adopted as a teenager. However, she still seems to have a relationship with her biological father. It does not seem like she has any sort of relationship with her adoptive family, and it seems like it has been that way for a while. Her adoptive mother occasionally posts things on Facebook, such as this post on her 21st birthday back in 2017. Our daughter Jasmine celebrated her 21st birthday yesterday. I wanted to post this publicly to tell her happy birthday. I have not seen her in over a year and I have not heard her voice in more than five months. Patrick and I called, texted, and Facebook messaged her yesterday, but there was no response. We love her and miss her. Please join us in continuing to pray for her to seek and find God and to come to a healthy place in her life. We do not know or understand why she has stopped responding to our communications. We are blessed to be her parents, even if she is choosing not to be a part of our family at this time. We love her and will continue to have care and concern for her. If you consider yourself her friend, please take a moment to pray for her. Thank you for reading. In 2021, she posted something else on the 10th anniversary of the adoption. On this date 10 years ago, Patrick and I became parents to a teenage daughter who was old enough to make the choice for herself to be adopted or not. We loved her then, we love her now, and we will continue to love her. As I write this post, we have no idea how she is doing or where she is living. We have no idea how our two granddaughters are doing or where they are living. We know that we made the right choice 10 years ago. We also know that there was never any guarantee that life would turn out as we mere mortals could have planned. We love you, Jasmine, Adina, and Athena, wherever you are today. She even posted something just a few days ago for Jasmine's birthday. Misty and her husband Patrick seem like people who so clearly care about Jasmine and her well-being, but somewhere along the way, the relationship failed. Jasmine's younger days seem like they might have been pretty tough. Someone who claims to be a friend of hers said that Jasmine was dealing with some mental health and personal issues, which is why she gave up her kids, but that she still calls them and visits them when she can. Maybe those mental health issues are what led to the divisiveness with her adoptive family. I'm not sure, but clearly something has been going on for her not to have her kids. Jasmine also looks to have gotten married on Halloween of last year to a man named Devonte Tucker. Not much is known about Wesley, the biological father. 
other than him allegedly being in Surreal right now with his mom. I did see that at one point he was in the military. The family member who posted in that Facebook group said that Ivan was actually taking the four kids to visit Alicia's dad, and the plan was for him to help Ivan fight for full custody of the kids. They said that when Ivan got to Arizona, he told the family that Athena and Adina were with their grandparents. Something I found on Ivan's Facebook seemed to possibly be a little bit concerning. On his cover photo is their two sons. You'll see that one of the little boys in the striped shirt seems to have a gash on his head. If you look closely at his ear on the left, you'll also see it looks swollen and has a gash on it as well. Now I know little boys are rough and tumble. I have one of my own. So I'm not necessarily implying that the parents did this or even had anything to do with it. However, my Facebook cover photo would not be of one of my kid's faces looking like that, but maybe that's just me. I went through Alicia's Instagram photo by photo. The biggest thing I noticed was the lack of photos of Adina and Athena. For someone who posts almost every single day, it seemed really odd that she posted her kids, especially two of them, constantly, but there were only a couple photos of Athena and Adina, and none in the recent months. The last post of Athena on social media was August of 2022. Alicia's posts are a mixture of quote photos, photos of her kids, especially pageant photos of her younger daughter, selfies, and a lot of religious postings as well. But she was also posting photos of her and her new boyfriend even just last week, after Ivan supposedly left for Arizona. On Thursday night, January 12th, it was announced that Alicia had been arrested and charged with child neglect. Alicia Adams was arrested today at 4.12 p.m. on two counts of child neglect. The counts are related to the two sisters, four and five, who were in her and her husband's care. Um, as you guys all know, the five-year-old was found wandering outside of the Adams's house on West Nebraska in Surreal, and a postal carrier found the five-year-old, and that's when police were notified. Um, at this point, the investigation into her whereabouts continues. We are actually getting tips from across Oklahoma as well as multiple other states. Um, as you also are aware, trash service in town was suspended. That was in an effort to search for additional clues as to Athena's whereabouts. Right now, I want everyone to understand we're still looking for her. Um, nothing has changed. Um, despite what's being said out there, we're looking for her. Um, our analysts and our team of multiple law enforcement agencies are reviewing surveillance video from around town and again, pursuing any tip that comes in, following it up and um, trying to identify any clues that can be used to locate Athena. Initially, that led me to believe that they thought that she was the last person to see the girls. Alicia's SUV was also towed from their house on Thursday night. So things were all pointing right at Alicia. However, pretty quickly after that, news broke that Ivan had actually been arrested in Arizona on a fugitive from justice charge. The fugitive from justice charge was a foreshadowing of what would be coming just a few hours later. On Friday night, charging documents were released that showed Ivan was being charged with first-degree murder and child neglect in Oklahoma. The murder was for a child, quickly confirmed to be Athena. Well, the girl still hasn't been found, and there's no word why the sisters weren't living with their biological parents. But what started out as a missing persons case now looks like the possible murder of a pretty young girl. People from far and wide are flocking to this small church in the just as small town of Surreal, Oklahoma. But praying isn't their top priority. It's finding a little girl. Where is four-year-old Athena? Investigators and volunteers are using every trick and tool they can find, from search dogs and drones to horses and helicopters, with the town's trash collection put on hold. 31-year-old Alicia Adams, behind bars in Oklahoma, facing two counts of child neglect. And 36-year-old Ivan Adams, behind bars in Arizona, facing murder charges back home. This is an ugly thing. She said, but let's continue to hope and pray that we find Athena. In these documents, you can see under the probable cause statement, it says that the subject was arrested due to an outstanding felony warrant issued out of Oklahoma for murder in the first degree and child neglect. 
Then if you go over to the other section on the right side of this page, it says what facts indicate that the defendant will flee if released. And it says explain. And then the response is yes, child homicide charges from Oklahoma. Below that, question seven asks, what facts does the state have to oppose an unsecured release? And then they say pending homicide charges. And then below, when it goes into the circumstances of the offense, it is the box is checked that says that somebody was injured by the defendant. And when it goes in for further explanation, it says child homicide. Now, what's very interesting is that when you continue looking through this document, when it goes to the evidence against this person, under crimes of violence, it says on question number two, how was the situation brought to the attention of the police? And the box is checked a third party. But if you go directly over to the right side of the page where it says the evidence of the offense, it says evidence of the offense was found in the defendant's possession, which the box is checked yes. And the explanation says cell phone, which makes me wonder if it was brought to them by a third party and if the evidence showing that he did in fact murder Athena was in his cell phone. Did he have a photo or a video of the murder? Was it a text message admission to Alicia saying what he had done? And did she bring that information to the police once it was discovered that Athena was missing? And is she the third party that they're referring to that brought it to the attention of the police? Or could it simply be that the third party was the state of Oklahoma, that they had brought it to the attention of Arizona since they are the charging state and that's where the documents come from? And could that be the third party? But still, could it have been something found, obviously, on his cell phone, whether it's a text message, a photo, a video, something to indicate that he has, in fact, murdered this four-year-old little girl? On Friday the 13th, he appeared in court, and the things he said were just astounding. Ivan Adam. For the first time since his arrest, one of missing four-year-old Athena Brownfield's caretakers stood in front of an Arizona judge awaiting his fate. So it looks like you have a warrant out of Oklahoma. The 36-year-old was arrested by Phoenix police on Thursday in connection to Athena's disappearance. The toddler was reported missing Tuesday when a mail carrier found her sister wandering the street alone. I want to get there and take care of her. Authorities arrested him in a Phoenix neighborhood. Police say he was taken into custody without incident. So you, okay, so you want to waive your rights? I don't want to hear it here. Adams waived his right to an extradition hearing making a shocking statement. I need to get there and fight this. Oklahoma authorities will have 30 days to pick Adams up from the Maricopa County Jail. He has a $1 million cash bond. Now, although the court documents do say they found evidence on his cell phone indicating he did in fact murder Athena, We don't know what that evidence is, and until he has a hearing, and until we find more evidence, and until he goes to trial for this, if it does go to trial, he is innocent until proven guilty. However, the coldness in his court statements and the details of him leaving the girls behind regardless when he went to Arizona show me what kind of human being this person really is. Maybe not perhaps a murderer, but certainly a trash human being nonetheless. He is being held on a one million cash bond, and Oklahoma now has 30 days to go and get him. His sister was quick to defend him on social media, though, saying, I don't know how to feel, don't know how to grasp this, but I do know my brother didn't do anything wrong. I'm praying for that little girl to be found and the truth comes out, but I'll be behind him 100%. I know he didn't do it, but he is going crazy without his babies right now. Praying for you, big bro. I love you. Prayers for the baby girl's family as well. This is sad as F. She, and then it's a SHM, which is an acronym for shaking my head. I know it's hard to imagine a family member doing something so heinous, but the court documents do not lie. There is evidence found on a cell phone of Athena's murder, apparently. Even just him leaving a five-year-old girl alone for days shows that he is just a bottom-of-the-barrel human being. All weekend, search efforts continued for Athena's body. They searched inside and out of an old rental house that they used to live in as well. They also searched a reservoir in Grady County, which is a neighboring county of Caddo County where Surreal is located. After that search, they went back to the home that Athena was last known to live at. 
There has been no official word of Athena's body being found, and law enforcement is still searching. The community is still reeling from all of this, and they held a vigil on Saturday night to honor this sweet, innocent four-year-old girl who was senselessly, allegedly murdered. We don't know anything besides the fact that Athena was apparently murdered and that Ivan is being charged with it. However, I have a hard time believing that Alicia didn't know about her murder. They both failed all of their children, but especially Athena and Adina. If Athena was autistic, did he just snap on her because of her extra needs? Could this be discipline gone way, way, way too far? Could this be a revenge thing since Alicia was already in a new relationship? The possibilities really are endless, but every photo shows a sad little girl, and it breaks my heart for the fact that I'm not sure she ever experienced true love from any of the adults in her immediate circle. No matter what happened, she didn't deserve it. If they didn't want to care for them, for either of the girls, they should have found someone else who would love those babies and give them the life that they deserved. My heart also breaks for Adina, as she has now lost her sister, who she seems to have been so, so close to. This is an extremely traumatic event in her life, and I can only hope she's been given all the love, care, and services available to help her navigate this the best way that a five-year-old little girl can. I think the most confusing thing of all of this is the absolute radio silence from all four of the adults in her life. Not one of them has posted or done an interview or anything pleading for this child's safe return. And as far as I know, not one of them has joined the other volunteers in the search. In fact, Alicia deleted her entire Facebook already, but not before people saw a post from Bladen on her wall during the exact time that the girls were left alone. And in this post, it says, I just want to tell you how much this weekend meant to me. Best weekend I've ever had. Just one of the many we will have. Life's a rocky road, but we're going to get through this and build something we've never thought possible. We got this, baby girl. Thank you for all you've done for me. It's astounding to me that this woman, who is a mother to her own four children and like a mother to these other two, didn't call to check in on her kids. But maybe she was just too busy with her new fling to care about her kids. I don't know. I don't know exactly what happened, but I do know that I wouldn't be going days without talking to my children and at least seeing them on FaceTime to just ease my mom heart when I'm away. I know that people are turning in their home security footage, so my hope is that maybe somebody will spot her on there. Even just seeing her could give a little clue as to what may have happened or help establish a concrete timeline. Maybe Athena wasn't left behind in the home with Adina. Maybe she was taken with the other children to Arizona to be disposed of, to be discarded of, I don't know. And maybe the reason Adina was left behind is because as her sister, they didn't want her seeing it or bearing witness to be able to then share that information with somebody in the future. I don't know. There's a lot of possibilities in this case, guys. So I would love to hear your opinions and thoughts on this case. So please comment them down below. Also, if you know anything, if you have any tips, please contact law enforcement immediately. Share this link to this video anywhere you can because Athena is still missing. She is four years old and still missing. So the more eyes on this case, the more awareness out there, the better, because hopefully as more people see it, it will lead to a tip being generated, a sighting, something that maybe one of the parents or caretakers said in passing to somebody that now rings a little bit different. It's very important that this goes everywhere so that as many tips as possible can come into the police so that it could possibly generate a significant lead in uncovering where Athena is and what happened to her. So please share it in your group chat, on your Facebook, on your socials, whatever you can do. Authorities are still taking tips, so if you know or have seen anything, please be sure to call it in so that Athena can be found and hopefully laid peacefully to rest. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I will keep you updated as this case rapidly unfolds. If you want to follow along and make sure that you don't miss any updates in this case, make sure you take a quick second right now to hit that subscribe button so that you'll be notified of those updates. Also, follow me on Instagram at underscore Annie Elise because I am able to post updates very quickly over there just on my stories, you know, off the cuff as they're happening in real time. Thanks again, guys. And until the next update and the next case, stay safe.